Coding is one of the most profitable skills in the world. Eight out of 10 of the biggest companies in the world are software companies. And software companies have the biggest multiples, where multiple basically means how much can you sell a business for relative to its profit out of any business model in the world. But creating a business with coding is not easy. And that is because building software takes a lot of time, which is why it's very crucial for you to have the right idea before you even start building anything. So that you don't end up in a situation where you spend six months building something only for it to make no money at all. And I can say this as someone who did exactly that. We spent six months working on a tech startup that eventually didn't end up making any money. Now there's a lot of mistakes that we made around this and one of them was not having the right idea. And I've learned a lot about what kinds of ideas I would consider if I was starting over. So in this video, I'm gonna give you five business ideas that you can do just with your coding skills to have a really good chance of being profitable if you execute them properly. And before we get into the ideas, you might be asking, well, if these are such great business ideas, why don't you do them yourself? Well, first of all, it's because I already have like two businesses. Second of all, I am actually actively looking into one of these sort of categories that I'm about to talk about. And number three, because a lot of these businesses are just not the right businesses for me. But for some of you, these ideas that I'm about to talk about might just be the right ones. And the first idea is simply a software agency. Now, this is a very simple idea, nothing revolutionary about it. With this, you're not really solving any revolutionary, like new problem or something like that. The problem you're simply solving is that there is need for software development skills and you're just willing to have a company that is willing to essentially provide software development as a service. Now, there's a bunch of these agencies out there. Your challenge will be to be better than your competitors to have some competitive advantage. Really, this is going to come from just offering the best service, offering better prices, faster turnaround times, just doing everything like all the basics better than your competitors. And what this is going to require is a lot of skill in software developers. So really, if you just want to focus on being a software developer, focusing on the technical aspect of developing software, then making a software agency or simply starting out as simply being a freelancer as a software developer can be a really great business to start with coding. Now, this is not gonna be the kind of business that's gonna make you a billionaire, but if you're just looking to make $10,000 a month, $50,000 a month, even $100,000 a month, then this is something that can really work if you really execute this well. The con here is that you're going to first probably need to build up a lot of experience as a software developer before you can do this. With this one, people are specifically paying you for your expertise, for your experience, for your skill. So probably what this is gonna look like is that you start off as a software engineer working a couple of years at the company, you become a freelancer, you build up some clients as a freelancer, and then eventually you start hiring out that work to other people and sort of outsourcing it. And that is how you scale this into an agency. So unless you're already experienced, this is not something that you can start straight away. It's not going to be an overnight thing, but over time, if you just want to be a software developer and really scale it, this is the path for you. The next one is a video editing bot. Now, this is something that I personally know the need for, as a YouTuber, as a professional video creator. Video is the future. There is so much need for different kinds of video, be it be advertisements, be YouTube video, like all kinds of social media content. And the biggest thing that takes the most time with video creation is the editing of the video. So as video creators, we're constantly looking for ways to minimize the time that it takes for us to edit the videos as much as possible, which is why almost all YouTubers, we have editors that we pay and hire, and that can of course get very expensive. Expensive. So if you could create an app, a bot that can just edit our videos for us, it's probably not possible for an entire video to fully be edited by AI, but just making certain parts of the editing process faster with some kind of app or bot can be super, super valuable. And I would definitely personally pay for it. There's already a lot of these out there. For example, a software that I use is called a Recut. That essentially allows me to just feed my raw video file to it. And it's gonna automatically cut out all the silences from that video. That's one example of a specific bot that just removes the need for a human to do that portion of the editing and just automate it. And I'm paying for the software and many other like extensions to editing programs like this. They're just doing certain parts of video editing faster. 
now to do this properly you're probably going to need to have some experience with video editing you're going to need to understand what are the parts of video editing that we constantly need to do and that take a lot of time but i definitely think that there is something here in sort of this category of ideas the next one is a tailored ai chatbot now this is a hot space of course everyone's trying to build ai startups there's a big craze with ai right now which could end up being a bubble but there definitely is need and a lot of use cases for this LLM technology. So things like ChatGPT, all these AI chatbots, where essentially you, what you would do is take these chatbots and these LLM models and train them for a specific purpose. You're not having to build the technology to build these chatbots from scratch. You're essentially just building like a layer on top of them and training them for a specific purpose. Just for example, there's this guy on Twitter called Levels.io that's built a bunch of AI startups. One of the ones that he has built is called therapist ai now i don't know exactly how he's built this i don't know exactly how it works but i'm pretty sure that underneath it's some kind of large language model that he has trained specifically to be a therapist but essentially like an ai therapist now, i could see a bunch of different use cases where you could do a very similar thing let's say you want to build an llm chatbot to give tax advice like you feed it all the tax laws from your country and then well of course you need to be careful with all the legalities and stuff like this but this chatbot could essentially answer you questions about the tax laws of that country or something like that the fourth idea is a local software now what do i mean by local software well let's say you are in a country that doesn't yet have a food delivery app for example what you could simply do is entirely and fully copy the model of let's say uber eats doordash and just apply that in your country i'm here in asia right now and we have this app called grab that's essentially like the food delivery app of a lot of asian countries whoever founded that application and i think right now it's one of the top valued companies in asia i'm pretty sure that what they simply did is they looked at america europe where these same apps already existed and they were like huh asia doesn't have this yet why don't we just build the same thing here in asia and they did it and what's really great about this is that it has proven demand because this same model has already worked in some different context so in this case a different country so this is going to be particularly good for you if you are perhaps not from a developed country you're from a developing country where you can essentially look at what already works in more developed countries and then bring that same idea to your local country now this is something that i'm actively looking at myself because i'm traveling a lot i'm sort of a digital nomad i'm spending a lot of time in more developing countries in asia right now i'm currently in vietnam so i'm constantly sort of on the lookout for the things that don't yet exist in this place but do exist in places that i have lived in the past and that i live now this can be challenging because you might need familiarity with the local market the local language even things like this so if you are from a developing country like this this could really be an opportunity for you and something that you could really capitalize in my opinion and idea number five is simply something that you have an unfair advantage in now this will sound like a cop-out answer i'm sure but this is really the best idea that you can come up with because i can give you a bunch of specific ideas for example when i talk about the video editing bot but unless you have some familiarity with video editing in this case this is really not going to be the best idea for you because you're going to need to have some domain knowledge in whatever category you're building that idea in and having this what i call unfair advantage where really it means like for example what i just talked about with the local software if you are from a developing country building a business in that country if you are let's say a real estate agent you're going to have an unfair advantage in building something in the real estate space me as a youtuber i'm going to have an unfair advantage in building a software for youtubers for example so for example the video editing board could be a really good software for myself to build for example it's so really the point here is that you want to look at what do you have that other people and most people are not going to have. Most likely, this is going to be related to where you have worked in the past, where you have experience that other people don't have. What unfair circumstances do you have that other people don't have? This is something that you simply have to exploit because there's so many people trying to come up with all kinds of business ideas, building all kinds of projects. So if you want to stand out, really, you're going to have to think, what problems do I understand really well that most people don't understand? And this is almost always where all of the best ideas are found. That is going to be the best idea 
for you to build. Let me know down below what you think about these ideas. But before you build any of them, it's really good to have an understanding of what it actually takes to build a business with software. There's so many things that people do wrong that I personally did wrong myself. So what I actually did, I interviewed my own business coach and we made a video about the exact things that you need to consider before you build any business with coding. So I highly recommend you to watch this video right here before you get started to have an understanding and you don't waste time like I did.